मुंडा ये अच्छा सा पेरा नहीं है अरे सब आ गए अरे आरिफ साहब आ गए ना ठीक है ठीक है तो आ, पहले आरिफ साहब से बात कर लेंगे उसके बाद मुझे मेन जो मेरा आज का टॉपिक था दस लाख वाला वो हमें कवर करना है उससे पहले भाई लोग जो लोग इंतजार कर रहे थे तो वी हैव आरिफ हुसैन साहब विद अस आरिफ साहब अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम ऑन आवर चैनल थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग Okay um um uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting and I'm very much sorry for uh, being late because I had a live on my channel so it just uh, got extended from what I uh, thought of so sorry for that apologies <laughs> no problem no problem okay. so one thing I want to know so that uh, you know I will tell all my viewers to subscribe to your channel before okay. that can you tell us uh, your channel uh the main content is in english or uh, malayalam or what okay. is that so that you know all people who can understand can join or all people who are from kerala or understand malayali they okay. can join your channel hmm the the language is called malayalam it's not malayali malayali is the so person mostly it's so, malayali malayalam sorry yeah okay. so i am a i am a malayali who speaks malayalam okay that's oh, how it oh, is oh, got it got used. it got it <laughs> so my channel name is my name itself arif hussain tirwath that you can see on the screen so that itself is the name okay so, we'll also share the link with uh, the audience oh great yeah so how is it going good 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 and uh, you know the main reason to invite uh, you is because mm. i thought like we'll celebrate this day mm -hmm. and without you people the celebration will be incomplete because this day was fixed by you know your entire team yeah. so i thought like you know i cannot i cannot do this stream without you <laughs> okay <laughs> so nice of you <laughs> thank you yeah bhai log jitne log dekh rahe hain aap sabhi logo se request hai ki aap log uh, arif sahab ke channel को जो है वो सब्सक्राइब कर ले और मैं बता दूं कि ये वो वाहिद इनकी टीम है पूरे हिंदुस्तान में पूरे हमारे भारत में जिन्होंने इतनी हिम्मत बताई आई एम श्योर आरिफ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी यू आर कॉम्पोर्स यू कैन ओके तो भाई लोग ये वो लोग हैं इनकी पूरी टीम है इनका वेबसाइट है आप लोग चेक कर लीजिएगा एक्स मुस्लिम ऑफ केरला और इन्होंने इतनी हिम्मत जुटाई कि इन्होंने केरला जैसे स्टेट में एक्स मुस्लिम नाम की एक तंजीम एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन्होंने रजिस्टर की है जो कि हम भी आज तक अभी तक नहीं कर पाए लेकिन ये लोग और सोचिए कि खुले चेहरे के साथ ये लोग कर रहे हैं तो बिग सल्यूट टू आरिफ एंड हिज एंटायर टीम थैंक यू सो मच Okay, so yeah, thank you so much for that kind introduction. And you can see this um, emu written here, and a bird is oh. here. Oh, so this is something related to this uh, January ninth itself, or some uh, events that led to this January ninth. Hmm. So yeah, so uh, we are called as emus here, or in Malayalam we call it emu. <laughs> That's a emu. bird. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's a bird from um, Australia, but. uh that came to be the short form for this ex muslim e m u ex muslim so the people here the uh what do you say the the moments here in your language they were uh, using this as a uh, as a derogatory uh, word to address us as an abuse uh, oh yeah so they made it that way so what i did was i just take it out and i made it into a brand i have this uh, t-shirts that is getting sold wow, on wow, on my wow. channel <laughs> and that since that day yeah since that day Achha. that slur is now stopped almost bhai log uh, ye uh, jo hamare ex muslim of kerala jo hai inki baqaida ek website bhi hai merchandise ye log kar rahe hain to aap log jo hai zara inki website pe se you know support them by purchasing t-shirts and whatever option they have uh my question to you is uh yeah. since i have very less, less time with you i know that you have yeah, come we can, for we can spend time. one hour we can spend one oh, hour oh no that's problem. great <laughs> so my first question to you is arif bhai mm. how did you get this team with you and what you mm. people thought and how difficult was it to register this organization the the first very question is how did you found these people with you from mm -hmm. kerala and i'm sure okay. what i have seen from the profile each mm -hmm. and 
every member of your team is highly qualified <laughs> okay yeah so uh, yeah that's a very important question how we came up to registering this organization here because you know um we all were having some kind of doubts in us while we were uh, movements okay so at that point of time we used to have some doubts we used to ask our maulanas here or to some of our fellows or if uh, they are not giving the proper answer the first person to approach was always zakir na like as you call <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we all used to do that but after uh, some time uh, can we... i request one thing arif bhai yeah yeah if you can try speaking in hindi Oh uh, most of our audience, you can try. If it's not working, then no. you can switch to English. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I am not Sahil. Yeah, Ari Patan Sahab, congratulations. Okay. And uh, oh, yes, Sahil Sahab, uh, I ah. I know English, but some some. So I am leave now. And uh, please check WhatsApp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Uh, Sahil, that will be a, a a disaster if I try to speak in Hindi task. because yeah because you know I I can understand better even I was watching Tiger Three now because uh, I can understand uh, pretty much. Okay. But, no problem. Yeah, Whatever pro yeah. you are comfortable with, please go ahead yeah. with that. The, the the only problem is that we don't use this language here for speaking. It's just mm. for listening that we use Hindi. So that's the problem. Apologies for that. No hate towards Hindi. I love that language. There's no problem in that. Only problem is imposing Hindi is an issue for me. Otherwise, everything is fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Please <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, um, okay, we 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 were having this kind of doubts, and uh, and whenever we get this, there was a feeling that okay, there is some. Problem with the religion, or is it a problem of, uh, or something related to us that we, uh, we, I am short of something that maybe I am having some kind of mental disease or some kind of uh, depression. Is that the reason why I am having all these kind of thoughts? That was the main problem we were having. We were not able to uh, really uh, clarify ourselves that these are the problems with the religion. So at that point of time, we had this um, uh, liberty of using this social media. Uh, preferably uh, mainly uh, Facebook. So through Facebook, we started writing in our fake IDs. I was having a fake ID and the name was um, XM Prophet, X Muslim mm -hmm. Prophet. That was my name, the uh, fake ID. So in that fake ID, I started writing initially. So likewise, I could see multiple other people writing the same same kind of things in our local language and uh, mainly in local language. So finally, we got into touch with each other that we realized that, okay, there are, it's not just me that having the same thing. We are having many other people uh, with the same kind of uh, thought processes and having these kind of um, <laughs> delusional thoughts regarding Islam. So we started talking to each other and we came to a conclusion that these are not delusional. These are some real facts that we are talking about Islam and we need to make it uh, vocal that we have to take it outside. So then we decided to group ourselves into some secret Facebook groups. And this happened mm. uh, around 2019 or so, 19 and 20. So by that time, we had a big group and there were almost uh, close to 500 members in that group. And we oh. had multiple, yeah, multiple other uh, WhatsApp groups and uh, mainly WhatsApp groups we had. So slowly we started building a, a community of ex-Muslims. So we got uh, in touch with each other through social media. We uh, we teamed up through social media, and we we still we know multiple other people uh, whom we have not met even once. Okay, so still we are in touch with each other. So that's how we build this organization as we uh, decided to uh, register this organization. And as you know, registering an organization, even in any name, even with uh, even you can uh, or you can register a faction of Hamas or even Al Qaeda in Kerala. That's how the facility is here. <laughs> it is too much pro Islamist and extremist. That's how we see it here. You the the number one organization that uh, SDPA and the Popular Friend, all these organizations, they are originating from Kerala. You know that. So that's not a big deal here. You can register anything. So we got that facility. You we used that facility and we got up with this uh, organization and um, we are having some internal issues with the organization and we are looking for a, a leadership change and uh, some other 
things about that. But apart from that, the community is growing. And in our first years, we were telling that there is at least one ex-Muslim in every Muslim family in Kerala. That's what we wow. used to say. But mm. now what we say is that uh, two things more. One is you have two ex-Muslims in every Muslim homes. That's one, uh, the updated version. And the second thing is in every uh, masjid, okay, or in every Islamic committees, in every masjid or in madrasas, you have one ex-Muslim there. So that's the situation here. So we even have ex-Muslim uh, imams, ex-Muslim uh, that uh, muazzins and uh, all of the people who, <laughs> who mm. are ex-Muslims, closer to ex-Muslims, but they are still uh, leading their life, uh, utilizing that opportunity as a, just as a, uh, as a profession, they just lead that way. And that's how uh, it, it is going on in our state. And it's pretty uh, much it is going forward uh, in a, in a, uh, very good manner and uh, i always envy the way you do on your channels because we had this <laughs> kind of uh, yeah that's that's true because you know we had this opportunity on clubhouse hmm. and uh, and that happened prior to 2021 and uh, in the beginning sorry something happened with my cam in yeah. the beginning yeah i think i can continue yeah yeah you can continue please continue okay yeah, so that happened uh, in the beginning of uh, 2022 as well. And uh, that was usually debates over Clubhouse and uh, other platforms where we used to have these voice debates and voice chats and uh, such communities. And mm. that's how we uh, conducted these debates. And mullahs and uh, moments used to come to our rooms and they uh, get busted mm. uh, with by seeing all these uh, Islamic reference and uh, all other uh, books and other things and they the only two books that is left to reject is one is quran and the other one is no only one book that is left is quran every other book is most rejected. of them are rejecting at <laughs> yeah that's so, good no, Achha, yeah. i'll just uh, in very short i'll tell uh people uh, hmm. what you said by log ye keh rahe hain ke uh main main cheeze main aapko bata dun ke इनका जो पहले जो एक्टिविटी थी या एक्टिविज्म था वो मोस्टली फेसबुक पे था वहां पे एक्स मुस्लिम प्रॉफिट करके इनका आईडी था फिर वहां से ये लोग जुड़े और ये कह रहे हैं कि केरला में इस तरीके से ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बनाना जो है वो कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है क्योंकि वहां पे हमास वाला भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आके बना सकता है या कोई और भी इस तरीके से बना सकता है तो दैट वाज नॉट वो कोई एक डिफिकल्ट uh, चीज इन लोगों के लिए नहीं थी और ये भी कह रहे हैं कि ये मोस्टली इनका जो डिस्कशन डिस्कशन है वो क्लब हाउस करके जो एप्लीकेशन है मेरे ख्याल से क्योंकि पहले बहुत लोग बोलते थे कि क्लब हाउस में आप लोग आओ मुझे और एडम साहब को मैंने आज तक वो ट्राई नहीं किया है मेरे ख्याल से एप्लीकेशन होगा या वेबसाइट होगी तो वहां पे ये लोग मोस्टली इन्होंने डिस्कशन किया है मुला मौलवियो के साथ और वहां पे आ, इन्होंने उनको डिबंग किया है साथ में इनका जो पहले का जो आ, एम था एक uh, क्या कहते हैं उसको हम लोग क्या लेते हैं वो uh, क्या कहते हैं यार होम नहीं एक टास्क एवरी होम एवरी होम एक टास्क इनका ये सेट इन्होंने किया था कि हर घर में एक एक्स मुस्लिम होना चाहिए लेकिन yeah. जो इनका अपडेटेड टास्क है वो ये है कि हर घर में दो एक्स मुस्लिम होना चाहिए मतलब ये लोग थोड़ा हाँ ओत भी आप कह सकते हैं इनका ओत तो अभी ये थोड़ा और टारगेट टारगेट थैंक यू सो मच टारगेट इन्होंने अपग्रेड कर दिया है एक से ये दो पे आ गए और ये कह रहे हैं कि यहाँ पे यानी इनके वहां पे केरला में कई सारे इमाम यानी मस्जिद के इमाम आलिम और जो मुआजिन है जो अजान देते हैं और बाकी सब काम करते हैं मस्जिद में हैंडल करने का तो वो एक्स मुस्लिम है लेकिन वो छुपे हुए एक्स मुस्लिम्स है और वो इस तरीके से जिंदगी गुजार रहे हैं वो खुल के नहीं आ सकते ऑब्वियसली आप सब लोगों को पता है कि हर कोई यहाँ पे खुल के नहीं आता है तो ये इन लोगों की एक्टिविटीज जो है वो चालू है आरिफ साहब माय क्वेश्चन टू यू इज हाउ मच चेंज यू आर सींग इन केरला आफ्टर यू स्टार्ट दिस एक्टिविज्म and the one specific question to you is uh, you know since you have this registered office mm -hmm. are you getting threats or do you see people coming there and uh, you know uh, doing some kind of 
uh, activities like you know the throwing stones or destroying your office have you seen something like that or it's absolutely fine yeah two things that you have asked i'll just complete the first one that is regarding um that the the changes that has happened occurred in our state after this activism uh, you were using the word target okay so actually what i said about uh, uh, two ex muslims in every home and um, in every masjid and in committees they have one um, uh, that kind of imam or that people already there it's not target that i i, I spoke about it's about the achievement or it's about the accomplishment you already we, achieved yeah that's what i'm saying so Are that you is sure? the, yeah <laughs> that is the current status now and uh, it is just an average that i'm taking because uh, okay when, uh, then yeah. let me inform my audience i'm really sorry yeah. i'm interrupting yeah. <laughs> you acha bhai log main thoda sa galat samajh gaya tha mujhe laga tha inhone ek aisa target liya tha ki har ghar mein ek ex muslim hoga ye keh rahe nahi target nahi hai aisa hua hai aisa ho gaya hai kerala mein har ghar mein ek ex muslim hai inka jo bhi तरीका रहा है इसको आ, क्या कहते हैं उसको जज करने का या नंबर्स लेने का लेकिन ये कह रहे हैं कि इनका जजमेंट या इनका अंडरस्टैंडिंग अभी ये है कि केरला के हर घर में एक एक्स मुस्लिम है और इनका टारगेट है कि दो हो अभी दो <laughs> अभी <laughs> so, how did you calculate that if I want to ask you or if if the woman uh, wants to know this uh we calculate it based on the feedbacks that uh, we get um, mostly from we have a, a sample group of uh, ex muslims that you know from the yeah. beginning day till now so whenever uh, we do something one uh, some kind of activities we always meet we always meet up at some uh, venues and for some programs and everything like that so we co- keep on updating how many people in their family got changed how many people are now ex muslims so we keep on doing that so if you uh, take the closest inner circle of ex muslims that is closely associated with our activities and all you take 500 of them in every that 500 ex muslim families you will see two new ex muslims on an average it is not two it is even more than 5 and 6 okay so if you can make it into an average in every 1000 ex muslim families that is closely associated with us we can see more than two and three ex muslims uh, newly forming in every year that is what we see today and apart from that this revelation about ex muslims as um, Uh, imams and other people who is engaged with the masjid duties that is being made by a maulana himself that's what made here ha huh. okay, okay. so he it. himself yeah he himself came out and he was telling us now most of the imams that you might be following in your namaz could be an ex muslim that's what he was saying and that wow. came wow. almost a week ago <laughs> so oh. and he has all yeah and he has already already also made an another uh, announcement is that by 2030 or so most of the uh, muslim women in our state uh, would be out of this religion that's what another revelation or the prediction made by this same maulana so he's closely watching this ex muslim activities going on here yeah so that's it abhi bhai agar aap sun rahe hain jaise aapne abhi thoda thoda comment likha hai logo ke samajhne ke liye agar aap dekh rahe hain hai abhi to likh dijiyega acha my question to you uh, arif bhai is is it easy in Kel- because see we have a very uh, different uh, experience here when we talk to muslims mm-hmm. uh, you know how much they are mentally uh, what you say mentally ill mm-hmm. when they talk to us and when they try to defend islam my question is how is the muslims of kerala uh, is it easy for you people to make them understand that islam is a cult and maybe one of the reason is because the uh, education rate there is high mm-hmm. something like that what what is your experience with the muslims of kerala because we have a very different experience here mm-hmm. anyway i am not aware of what your experience is but i will uh, tell about mine 
uh, before that you had one question pending in the uh, previous session yeah. that is something attacks. related to the yeah attacks over this office and all i i would say that no nothing happened that sort of uh, a thing because uh, that's not happening here maybe because we mostly run our activities online maybe that's the reason and uh, the office we have it as a, a virtual office like we have that got registered in a uh, in, in a what do you say co-working space so we have that office and everything running there so the address is there registration is there everything is uh, made uh, using that uh, address so uh, it's it's very difficult for them to do something over there so that's how we used it's a part of cost cutting too because if you want to do something that way that's the best option uh, we you can use this virtual office setup and uh, that's one aspect about that so we are not seeing any kind of attacks or anything like that as of now i'm not sure what would happen next time maybe even you can even expect a missile attack over there <laughs> that can also happen <laughs> <laughs> that's how the world trade center got down you know that so that's one thing and uh, regarding this uh, this uh, <laughs> moments how they react and how they take up all this uh, let me ask you something how do you call this um, moments who are so adamant about this religion and they are totally ignorant about this uh, science and uh, all this new stuff how do you call them is there any uh, words uh, used we call them dimagi the appan dibangi appan <laughs> what's that mentally <laughs> challenged mentally challenged okay mentally challenged okay so that can be crudely translated to malayalam as uh, poten okay poten. we call poten yeah what <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a term here that is um, madrasa potan that's what we call them okay hmm. <laughs> okay so that means madrasa idiot in in simple terms yeah so, similar yeah so i'm a i'm an ex madrasa idiot or a, an ex madrasa potan that's how i introduce myself because i was a madrasa potan once or a madrasa idiot oh, once how many okay, years so, you spent in madrasa uh i will come to that because uh, that's something okay. related to the question also because you were asking about how oh. this exposure is uh, 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 given to these people right is it about this um, um, uh, the literacy rate or something related to that i would say the better you are illiterate the be the best thing if you are uh, uh, looking for avoiding this religious extremism that's what i would say because in kerala it's not just that the literacy rate is high it is also uh, correlating with the increased um, extremism the exposure to religion and uh, even the in, the more number of uh, recruitments that happened to the isis and other uh, even to taliban we had the moment when taliban was capturing uh, afghanistan at kabul there were uh, a video circulating where the people were uh, doing sujood on the roads and they were telling uh, allah akbar take beer ola uber that's how we say so they were doing that and at that point of time we could even listen to malayalam our local language in that video so that's the reach of malayalis even in taliban we have them so why they are reaching there it's all about the exposure so the more you are educated the more you are getting into uh, the field of reading books reading things uh listening to other aspects uh, trying to learn more things and if you are a believer if you are a, a, a madrasa idiot you will be more inclined towards learning more religion because that will uh, you already have a, a a need for salvation improving your uh, religious attitudes and to ensure the your huris the number of huris you you should never uh, let them go so since that is there these people always go for religious reaffirmations or they keep on uh, listening keep on learning keep on improving themselves it's a kind of perfectionism okay so that is the biggest danger so the main problem what we see here is that there is no difference between these madrasa idiots all over the world wherever you take them it is the same that's what i have seen with my limited exposure to these uh, people here and some people out from outside so what i would say is that their religious uh, education and their other education or the worldly subjects like their science and other subjects they always try to use these science subjects to explain or to reason out apologetically uh, these religious texts like uh, they will bring up embryology into quran they will bring mm. up 
other things you might be knowing that like uh, solar system um, uh, even everything you take it you you name it you can see it in uh, in the quran whatever be the scientific explorations newer ones even the lunar expeditions that we are we are discussing about even that you can find in our uh, quran you might be seeing that earth is flat in the quran but they will say that okay no it's it's round we have that uh, Uh, the evidence for that that's how they do it and it's yeah they change the same every everywhere. time whatever yeah. they see and they they change themselves yeah so that is same everywhere the only thing is the aggressiveness by which they try to do this that will be different here we are seeing it in a more difficult manner because here the people who are doing it are a little bit more educated like we are to face uh, surgeons uh, engineers and uh, people like them arguing this kind of bs and we just imagine how difficult it would be uh, for us to uh, uh, let them know that it's wrong and what they are claiming is wrong it's very difficult because they will keep on doing this so yeah that's how we experience it here that's that's really good uh <laughs> so what is your future plan how you are seeing uh, this activism or where where do you see this activism going in uh, maybe next five years if i ask the main uh, about uh, kerala yeah uh, my future plans regarding this ex muslim movement here is nothing pertaining to kerala alone it's all about uh, linking the ex muslim activities here with the global ex muslim movement so that we we will be getting even more powers like um, we we need to represent ourselves into the ministries and uh, other people whereby we have to raise the uh, the the anti constitutional uh, attitudes that we are facing now just like mm. we are getting out from our uh, homes we are getting denied of our property rights and other things and uh, many other things like that so we have to raise our voice even uh, when we talk about this circumcision we have to fight against that so th- for taking these uh, things out of kerala and to uh, make it reach the place where it has to reach like the the central ministry and all we have to form a a, a national ex muslim body and for that i have already extended my um, uh, my my willingness to be a part of that in my own ways like whatever way that i can do in uh, in that part i can share all my uh, time and effort so that's not a problem but this is the goal this is the future that i see because it, it shouldn't be limited to a small place like kerala i don't see much um, future in that Uh, that kind of a small organization uh, just confining to a small state speaking a local language that won't do much good to the country as a whole so we have to take it forward so for that we need a national organization so that's the biggest goal that i have okay good. the dream very good so yeah. uh, what we are seeing is apart from kerala also uh, arif bhai we mm-hmm. are seeing that uh, and if you see the title of the video i have i'm still to react to that video of the molvi from pakistan okay. wherein they are acknowledging that there are around 10 lakh people mm-hmm. the registered member of for atheist group in pakistan okay wait yeah please go so ahead. so was it somewhere around 4 lakh previously in another yeah, video previously it was 4 lakh last okay, year now it is 10 lakh yeah 10 lakh okay. it's 10 That's lakh registered member great uh, atheist of uh, pakistan and uh-huh. you know if i have to calculate mm-hmm. if it is 10 lakh from pakistan atheist mm. even if i consider uh, you know some 20000 or maybe 50000 who are not muslims maybe mm. uh, mm. christians or hindus who became atheist which is mm. very rare but mm. even if we give that much you know buffer mm. Hmm. still we have around 9 lakh 70000 or 9 lakh 50000 ex muslims registered ex muslims in pakistan okay so what what do you think about that okay they are really the brave hearts you <laughs> i i think there's no point in asking that question because we all know how pakistan exists today it's the uh the most uh, the word that was used before by some other person is that pakistan is the shit hole uh, of islam <laughs> or the way islam is being <laughs> carried out there one cannot even imagine how a, a muslim 
uh, even a Muslim cannot live there, then just imagine how a, a, an, an apostate or a murtad can live there. Hmm. So there's no one. And they have strict laws uh, against, you know, the blasphemy hmm. yeah. of Prophet Muhammad. Previously, they had laws <laughs> which was confined to the blasphemy of Prophet Muhammad only. Yeah. But yeah. now they have extended that and now you cannot even do blasphemy of the companions also sahaba mm. also okay oh. they have such a strict law but still if you see so much increase in the number then mm. you know the muslim ulama the mullah mm. always really need to worry about this okay yeah true <laughs> so that really means uh, in in that previous video where they were speaking about uh, 400 uh, sorry, four lakh ex-Muslims uh, who are already out, and they were literally crying on the screen. Uh, you might have seen that. Right? Yeah, we have one seen video. Them that, yeah, one video that was shared by Harris Sultan. So, mm. so I think uh, that itself proves that uh, the things are changing. These Maulanas they cannot withstand the power with which uh, this internet and social media is causing this damage to this Islam as an ideology that's unstoppable. It's a, really a tsunami. And it's not a, just about the number of ex-Muslims. It's all about how this uh, the debunking of Islam is happening. The volume of information that is shared against Islam or disproving Islam, that is unmanageable, unthinkable for them. So that's the biggest problem that they might be seeing. And they, the the volume of doubts they might be uh, trying to answer in their close uh, circles, that will be even more higher. That's what we see here in our place where these Maulanas, they come and uh, talk about how these people are uh, you know asking what? questions. Yeah. Ariba, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you might have heard him. Mm -hmm. The favorite Murtad. Okay. The favorite Murtad. Is the light of Murtad. <laughs> and English me jada tarif bhi kar paunga, main Hindi me aaja ta. Yare bacho, jo kuch karna ta kar lo, abbu aare hain. Murtad, humare nurani Murtad. Hello, brother. Momino ki uljad. Momino ka dar, Momino ka khauf. Okay. Aur jisko ab international level pe ye mana ja raha hai, कि ये वो शख्सियत है जिससे अब मौलवी मौलवा मौलवी मौलाना जो है घबराते हैं डरते हैं दूर भागते हैं वो हमारे साथ जुड़ चुके हैं एडम सीकर साहब का फर्शी सलाम के साथ सारे लोग इस्तकबाल करें वेलकम एडम साहब आपका हमारे अपने चैनल पर आपके अपने चैनल पर Sir, धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो वेरी मच अप्रिशिएट इट और बड़ा ही एडम साहब दो चीज क्विकली दो चीज एक तो ये है कि एक्स मुस्लिम ऑफ केरला यहां पे आरिफ भाई और उनकी पूरी जो टीम है वेल क्वालिफाइड एवरीवन इज हाईली क्वालिफाइड इन हिज टीम इन्होंने रजिस्टर किया और उसके बाद इन्होंने कहा कि भाई 9th जनवरी जो है वो हम एज एन एक्स मुस्लिम डे सेलिब्रेट करेंगे अगर आप थोड़े देर पहले से सुन रहे थे तो इन्होंने रिजल्ट भी बताया कि इनके जो एस्टीमेशन है उसके हिसाब से केरला में हर एक मुस्लिम घर में एक एक्स मुस्लिम है और इनके साथ जो इमाम मस्जिद के जुड़े हुए हैं वहां से भी इनको इस तरीके की रिपोर्ट आ रही है तो हमने सोचा कि चूंकि आज नाइन्थ जनवरी है तो मैं इनको भी इन्वाइट करूंगा और इनसे भी हम समझने की कोशिश करेंगे कि क्या चल रहा है so, ye kuch update mein aapko dena chahta tha and the mic goes to you that was awesome that is awesome that is awesome with tari bhai yeah main kehta hu ki this is one of the best thing i ever heard again 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 and again like january is kind of one of the best moments of our life because as soon as i i saw this video from pakistan which was actually played back in december or late november and i played it in january and i came back from my holidays and i was like Wow, that is a blast. <laughs> Once I saw that, played it on my channel. Now you're playing it and now I'm seeing and listening to this beautiful verdict again that even in Kerala, which was supposed to be the stone ground of Islam in India, now having at least one ex-Muslim in every home. Like yeah. it is a blast of a month 
quite frankly, and a blast of a start of this beautiful 2024. Um, I'm, I'm loving it. I am just simply loving it. Then you will even uh, love more 2025 and the other months to come. <laughs> Get ready for that. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. My friend, uh, we, me and Sahil, we have been working for almost like three years in mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. India and Pakistani channels. We started like Sahil. Do you remember like when we had like when the first time I came to my came to your channel, you were saying let's make it. 250 today. No, no, no. The first yeah, day. The yeah, very right, first right, right. Day, the first time when you came. The, yeah. Before before my first uh insan se insaniyat ka safar, uh, Islam yeah. se insaniyat ka safar, like the first every the first day I came to your channel, it was like, let's make it 200 live viewers. And from that, let's make it 200 <laughs> to to a time when people used to come to our channels and they're like, you guys are not even ex-Muslim. No, nobody leaves Islam. This is all BS. Nobody leaves Islam. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, a time so, where, uh, uh, to a time where last year in April, when mullahs of Pakistan were crying out loud saying, we have 400,000 ex-Muslims in Pakistan. And they are writing names on their private part. What? And all that kind of stuff that they were saying that. But anyhow, long story short, from that 400,000 ex-Muslim, and we spoke about that on this channel as well, saying, hey, this will grow exponentially. Because, because you know what happens? Like when the mullahs previously trying mm. to put a put a curtain over it, put a put mm. a blanket over it, saying, ah, nobody leaves Islam. Anybody who leaves Islam, he's not even a true Muslim and all that kind of stuff. So they had these two kind of verdicts. And then finally, they are coming out, crying on the live satellite TV channel of the Pakistan, saying, we have 400,000 ex-Muslims in Pakistan who are blaspheming the Prophet Muhammad, even so and so that they had to cry on the TV saying they are writing Muhammad on their private parts. By the, by the way, I have no idea who's going to do that. I, I don't want to curse my private part by writing name Muhammad on my private part. That will be stupidity of me. So anyhow, but like, but like coming back from April to November, end of November, December, 2023, same year, that 400,000 became a million. That's luck. Mm. It mm. became a million. Now, and then obviously I was I was always under the impression that the ex-Muslim apostasy rate in India should be much higher. And thank mm. you so very much for coming here and telling us this beautiful statistics of Kerala, which is supposed to be the most stronghold of uh, the uh, the Islamic Republic of India, by the way, I would literally call it Islamic Republic of India, because obviously in Kerala, you don't have the true Indian Republic and Indian laws over there. I, I don't believe that you guys actually have it uh, based on what I, I've seen, it's... what they are doing there. But beautifully <laughs> described. I'm, I'm loving it. Thank you so very much. I'm sorry I speak a lot. Yeah, it's okay. But, uh, but but the thing that you, uh, I, I don't know whether you uh, mentioned it as a fund or something, but I would say that why we were able to register this organization is uh, here is because uh, the people here or the, the, the governance and the constitutional morality that we uphold in this part of the uh, country, I would say it is much better. That's the only reason why we were able to register this. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. So it's visible at every level. But of course, we have problems. We do have problems, and we do see the extremism growing here. And you can see the same thing happening in the West, wherever the the rules and regulations are more liberal, and wherever the laws and regulations are more um, democratic and secular. That is the best breeding ground for the Islamic terrorism. You know that. So that is the primary reason why we see this kind of activities mostly coming from Kerala, the biggest number of recruitments that is happening to ISIS, that is even from Kerala. And the reason is this, the kind of exposure and uh, how they uh, go on with this uh, uh, criticism of other religion and the uh, uh, proselytization of other uh, their own beliefs and uh, all other things. It is It was a time when they were having a free run in our in our state, but now it is really getting a big blow from these ex-Muslims and the free thinkers. And one another thing that I would add to this is that it's not just the ex-Muslim movement that is uh, growing here. It is the, uh, in, a, in a way I would say that ex-Muslim movement here is a product or a byproduct of the rationalist movements that was existing here for the past 40 years, 40 plus years. So it was just an, uh, an offshoot of that movement. 
so we were having a, a good backup of rationalist movements like the kyas kerala yuktivadi sangham it is called they they have that is the longest running uh, rationalist organization in, in in the country i think so that was in uh, kerala and we have m- many other things and uh, one another biggest organization is uh, essence global they are here since 2016 and that is the best organized uh, organization where they uh, hosted this uh, uh, what do you say the atheist convention last time and the uh, year before also they uh, brought in almost 10000 offline participants for their convention so that is an atheist convention so that was a live convention uh in a in a big auditorium i think i shared the details with sahil uh, that day itself so that was happening for the consecutive uh, two years every uh, every year we are conducting that and these are the way uh, how these rationalist movements are all operating here and extremist movement is just a part of that or a something that emerged uh, from that uh, utilizing the confidence and utilizing the uh, the public atmosphere where people uh, even the extremists they are also getting a pressure a social pressure of democratization or the free speech that they are exposed to so they are now totally taking back their steps are taking back so that's what we see here and that's how it is functioning here so we, you couldn't say that that uh, the rules are different okay the rules might be different but in this way so i would just would like to add to that that's great uh, yeah uh, uh, one yes, please, uh, one thing sail sail one thing one thing mm. just one thing please, please, one please. of the beautiful part that you actually said as well which i have been stating a lot of times but you just stated it stated it in a flow and then you moved forward is that a secular law area is the breeding ground of islam Definitely, i would like yeah. to dwell more on that because mm. i have been saying that for a long time and a lot of people are saying hey aram you are wrong because because you you, you understand that like and i don't even call it secular i actually call it i use the word secular with a s i c k okay. the illness not secular <laughs> like because it is not secular because secularism is different if you read the definition it's it's very different as compared to secularism who are actually saying hey give space to islam islam is a good religion without even knowing what islam is Islam is a good religion. What do you have to add on that before we can move forward? Because I want people to sink into this statement. It's very important statement that you said, but in a flow. Okay, yeah, that's a very valid interjection, I would say, because you know, as you said, um, when we say the word secularism, people always misunderstand that word uh, by say by believing that uh, secularism is giving importance to every religion. of the uh, the same way that's what is secularism that's what people always misunderstand especially the madrasa products so we always try to correct them <clears throat> secularism is separation of religion from the governance that's in simple terms what is secularism and the governance means it's not just the government it's all about the every wakes of politics where wherever two people are coming together especially in a uh, in a multicultural uh, society like in our country we we have a diverse population with, with different uh, people from different religion different areas different languages and every other things so one major thing that can cause a problem is in india what we are seeing here is one is religion and the second one is language we have this language problems always happening we even <laughs> last day we uh, saw a news i don't know whether it is a fake news but we saw that one uh, one lady while having they were making out she was screaming in uh, english and not in kannada so they got a divorce so they the husband was too much into kannada so that's how the language is causing problem here so the same way religion is also causing problem here so we need to separate these kind of ideologies from the public places but when it comes to india or in uh, any other p- uh, places uh, where we see uh, th- that place as a secular uh, secular country the problem is that you will keep away keep a distance from every religion except islam that's the problem and for that you give a lame reason and that lame reason is that muslims are the persecuted people they require some attention so please give them some space they please please uh, ignore their mistakes 
they are they were all, always persecuted so their mistakes are not mistakes these are the some of the arguments made by the works we call it here the they are the people so they literally give more space to this uh, victim card that is being played by the islamists in the name of religion and in the name of muslims and thereby hijacking the secular environment and thereby they slowly add on their own values their own religious rules into that secular environment thereby making that secular environment a non secular one and finally what happens is that the word that you used come into play that secular environment becomes a secular environment where every religion is kept outside except islam and criticizing islam becomes a big offense even you might even be uh, brought in front of the law and you can even be jailed for that that's what is happening here so, so in uh, yeah. before we go we already opened three 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 branches mm-hmm. of uh, this statement so like the first statement in this branch that you actually brought up is secularism is all about separating the law and the religion unfortunately as you and i both were muslims for a very long time at mm-hmm. least i was a uh, law cannot be separated from islam islam mm-hmm. provides law it provides governance and the law in each and every aspect of your life whatsoever mm-hmm. in every mm-hmm. aspect like even how you live inside your home islamic law goes inside your home let alone yeah. on the roads let alone on the schools uh, uh, financial institutes government institutes it goes so deep it gets into your home and mm-hmm. then provides you with the law and the punishment which we call sharia sharia mm-hmm. by itself law means law uh, mm-hmm. very falsely stated a lot of time by a lot of people sharia law it is stupidity they are living in a law mm-hmm. law land i would mm-hmm. say because law by itself is sharia sharia means mm-hmm. law which can also um, defined as islamic law so mm-hmm. it's it's a full encapsulation so as soon as seculars will say let's go to the second point hey mm-hmm. these guys are persecuted uh, so give them a space space whether they are persecuted or not i'm not even going into the debate whether they are persecuted mm. or not let's just put the debate on the side let's put their mm. victim card on the side let's mm. think and assume for the sake of argument that the muslims are persecuted for the sake of argument still mm. as a secular you cannot provide support to a theology and ideology which does not separate law with the religion because by definition secularism has to separate law with the religion now tell me how and why this wokeism is going towards islam and not against islam yeah so yeah that brings in the next point that is whenever we speak about islam the problems that is uh, created by islam what these wokes do is that they will bring in muslims so we are not talking about muslims or the way they live or the 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 partial laws that they might be following from islam we are talking about the the scriptural or the sharia what is being mentioned as per the scriptures which is directly and indirectly ruling every muslim on this face of the earth that's what we are talking about so what they do is that they just bring in this people inside so whenever this uh, face of the person or the people comes in obviously the discussion goes wrong that's what is happening here so uh, what i'm saying is that <clears throat> the main agenda of all my uh, youtube videos and whatever things that i'm doing here all every other people who are doing the same activity here in uh, in this part of the country is that to make sure that the idea of islam is the problem muslims are not to be made clear to every people in this country which is opposed to something that was always said and popularized by every media every uh, vox and every political parties and uh, every other per- person that muslims are the problem islam is not so now that is getting slowly corrected slowly we are bringing it back to that point where people need to address the real problem that is islam so for that when you uh, mentioned about the secularism it is impossible to separate the laws from the religion and when we speak about a religious uh, sorry a secular country it, there is no distinction between this religious law and religion itself 
the only thing is you have to keep aside the religion for example the uniform civil code that we are talking about here as per the uniform civil code that is being <clears throat> uh, getting uh, formatted in the in, in that pro, uh, in that area what we are seeing is that the main thing is to avoid or to eliminate the gender disparity the men and uh, uh, women there is a disparity in islam so when the uniform civil code comes in there is equality between man and a woman but for islam it is not so when we speak about uniform civil code what these mullahs are saying or the uh, the political parties who are siding with this islamic belief or the muslims what they are saying is that no it is part of their religion you cannot question that it's part of their custom it's sharia you are not a, you shouldn't do that that's what they say but we being uh, part of this activism we always say them no that is not right that rule even if present in islam you have to correct it you have to discard it you have to throw it off that's what we are saying so now this kind of um, uh, debates are getting heated up and more and more uh, islam and islamic sharia is getting exposed thereby giving more chances for uh, the muslims to learn about this and even the folks slowly i i won't say that works are getting enlightened they are already <laughs> ignorant of all this but <laughs> they think they are already enlightened by the way they are, they are but already, like you brought in yeah. a very important point again now yeah so now we are moving from there the secular mm. ideology and we already exposed that and i hate secular ideologies literally speaking rather <laughs> to an extent certain times i actually have stated in my on my channel that i hate seculars even though that i have never used the word i hate muslims i love muslims a lot of my family members are still muslim so i love muslims uh, i hate islam but when it comes to these secular thoughts because mm. the human they, they damages the human itself like they, mm. they, these humans will come in and fight with us for Islam, not for Muslims, because we, like you said, we always stated we we love Muslims, we hate Islam, and we separate mm. the theology from the human being. But mm. these seculars will come in and they will start debating that Islam is good, and that's that's yeah. where I it, it blows my head off. Literally yeah. speaking, <laughs> it blows my head off, and yeah. I go full machine gun on them. But <laughs> But the problem comes in, in in a little difference now. You talked about unified unified civil code. Like back in 2023, somebody asked me, uh, we will be implementing unified civil code in India. And I was like, that's impossible. No, I, mm -hmm. I cannot foresee that in mm -hmm. the in the coming at least two elections. In the coming mm -hmm. two elections, I at least do not foresee that happening. So don't say that it's going to happen tomorrow, it's going to happen the next year. Why? Mm -hmm. The reason behind is that Muslims will mm -hmm. reject it once and for all. Now, what you are saying is you are mm -hmm. partially implementing unified civil mm -hmm. code. So mm -hmm. you are not you are not forcing to implement a full civil law, rather a partial unified civil law where you are first equating women with men and the rest of the things will come later i think if we go this route it is much better it's going to have much lesser impact because the impact will be on one thing at one point not the whole ideology will be destroyed i i back at that particular time when i was stating the statement i was not thinking of partially implementing unified civil code i hmm. was thinking of as the whole unified civil code i was like that's not possible they have they have to have polygamy unified civil code will not allow polygamy and and then they have to have hijab and all these kind of stuff and the women rights hmm. and the divorce rights and and they're giving rights of divorce to the females and and the rights of the kids and so on and so forth it's it's so many things it's impossible that these Muslim will mm. say yes whatsoever. But the way you actually describe it, I think if we partially hit one point at a time, it's going to be a, a fairly better way to implement it and we can achieve the goal much faster and much, much better way. Um, okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that Uniform Civil Code is uh, not pertaining to every aspect of human existence. It's... Uh, as you as you know that um, in India, 
uh, almost 100% of uh, the criminal law is unified so there's no problem of implementing sharia uh, islamic sharia for uh, criminal law if that is to be brought in here i think the islamists or the muslims here will fly away to pakistan <laughs> because in that <laughs> pakistan will be the best country for them for, so when it comes to the civil laws the problem is almost 95% of the uh, civil laws are already unified only a few things are left over and that is related to marriage divorce uh, their uh, inheritance and adoption and a few things like that uh, five things that is the main or the only five areas where this uniform civil code is going to address and these are the only things where um, in as per the civil matters are concerned there is no unified laws are present for these five things um the 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 uh, respective religious uh, laws are now actually implemented here for the muslims especially but for but the other parties we you, have the hindu code yeah before you move forward before you move forward now mm. that's where the problem is so now you're bringing mm. all the civil code in so civil mm. versus uh, criminal we are already mm. separating criminal because islam muslims will never ask for criminal sharia law in any country rather yeah. rather even when the when the afghanistan started having criminal law islamic law they are fleeing from afghanistan by hanging on the wings and the wheels aircraft. of the boeing yeah, aircraft, yeah, aircraft, right yeah. it's it's it's, mm. it's just so crazy they like they do not want criminal law implemented they do not want criminal sharia to be implemented in any country whatsoever yet they want sharia yeah. This is this can, is this is one of the most stupidity in essence. No, can no, I no. add one point, Adam Saab? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, one one moment, fact, Sahil. One moment, yeah, Sahil. Yeah, please work. We have Pushpak Viman to cling on to fly and to escape. If Sharia criminal law is implemented here. Pushpak Viman. <laughs> <Good. laughs> in Pushpak fact, Viman, uh, what, what is what is that Viman, by the way? Okay. Viman Sahil. is uh, aircraft, plane. Ah, okay. <laughs> that is okay, Hindu mythology. It something related to hindu mythology Push in fact what we are seeing uh you know in the whole world is that even the islamic countries the actual sharia law of beheading individuals they are going away from that i mean i don't think any islamic country now who have this uh you know provision of beheading individuals even saudi had let alone cutting the hands better there let alone yeah. cutting the hands on this uh, for exactly a exactly no cutting of hands for the thief they are moving away from all these shits mm. yeah so, uh, they, they by the way shit and sharia that. is very close to each other by the way sahil don't don't use that <laughs> it's it's pretty close I, it's a very it, it, it was really a very good discussion between uh you and uh arif bhai mm. uh I'm sure बहुत से लोगों को जो हिंदी नहीं समझ में आती है तो कुछ हमारे अभी भाई और भाई लोगों ने भी कोशिश की है उसको समझाने की लेकिन ओवरऑल ये चीज हम सब में कॉमन है बीइंग एन एक्स मुस्लिम के इस्लाम जो है ये एक कल्ट है और एक गंदगी है और खास करके जो इंडो पाकिस्तान या बांग्लादेश या जहां भी मुस्लिम्स बसते हैं अरब के अलावा अरब लोग तो समझ में उनको आ रहा है वो दूर जा रहे हैं लेकिन यहाँ के लोगों को इस्लाम की हकीकत बताना जरूरी है और हम सब एडम मैं और जितने एक्स मुस्लिम चैनल है हिंदी स्पीकिंग हो चाहे वो साउथ के चैनल हो हम सब का जो एक कॉमन मोटिव है एम है वो यही है कि एटलीस्ट मोमिनों को मुसलमानों को इस्लाम की हकीकत बताई जाए ताकि वो इससे निकले सो दैट इज अ कॉमन गोल फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस एंड व्हाट वी वांट आरिफ भाई इज वी वांट टू ब्रिंग ऑल एक्स मुस्लिम्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट रीजन एंड यू नो डिफरेंट लैंग्वेजेस टू सो दैट दे दे ऑल कम टुगेदर एंड we ensure that each and every person who is doing activism should grow in their hmm. uh, you know in their region to ye hum logo ka maqsad hai aap aaye hamare paas sarif bhai aap log activism jo kar rahe ho wo malayalam mein kar rahe ho agar aap logo ke touch mein jaise kannad mein 
अगर कोई आप जानते हो किसी एक्स मुस्लिम को इस तरीके का ऑर्गेनाइजेशन या फिर चैनल है आप मुझे जरूर बताइएगा व्हाट्सएप पे आई विल इंश्योर के आई विल टॉक टू देम एंड आई विल ब्रिंग देम ऑन माई चैनल सो दैट पीपल नो के भाई इस रीजन वाले या इस लैंग्वेज वाले भी काम कर रहे हैं इस पे सो दैट इज वन थिंग दैट वी वॉन्ट फ्रॉम यू श्योर कोशिश करेगा मैं अरे वाह दैट्स गुड दैट्स गुड आई नो दैट इनकी अंग्रेजी तो बड़ी जबरदस्त है यार और हिंदी उससे भी जबरदस्त है अच्छा वन थिंग बिफोर यू गो आरिफ साहब मेनी पीपल दे वांट टू नो अबाउट दिस गाय यार क्या नाम है यार उसका अस्कर अली आई एम सीइंग द कमेंट्स ही सेफ नाउ क्योंकि वो जब अस्कर अली साहब के ऊपर जब अटैक हुआ था और उनके बहुत सारे वीडियोस सर्कुलेट हुए थे तो पीपल वर फैसिनेटेड बाय लिसनिंग टू हिम बट सडनली ही डिसअपियर्ड तो बहुत सारे लोग मुझे भी मैसेजेस करते हैं कि अस्कर को बुलाओ अस्कर को बुलाओ अस्कर को बुलाओ बट आई टोल्ड देम के भाई ड्यू टू सम सिक्योरिटी रीजन ही कैन नॉट कम बट सिंस यू आर हियर एंड यू आर इन टच विद हिम कैन यू अपडेट आवर ऑडियंस इज ही फाइन इज ही टोटली फाइन yeah he's totally fine and uh, you know that he's so young and he was not uh, uh, he was denied of his uh, routine uh, education and all other things so he was busy with uh, acquiring all those qualifications he was uh, studying the 10th and now he's into 12th so apart from that he's doing some little business so he's too much focused into that building his own career and his life so very much little time for all this activism so we are in touch chance He's... we can bring him on the stream maybe uh, later on I, i i won't guarantee that because you know it's all about um, his security and his uh, willingness because he right now he is not in kerala that's one thing that i can say so uh, he is living somewhere outside kerala so that's a, a real threat to his life now so for that reason i won't say uh, anything uh, with that so, much assurance so you don't yeah. have to say anything more on that obviously yeah. except for his mm. life and he is he's fine we are in don't, don't give us more information yeah. mm. uh, we are already being watched by over 6000 people at this moment but yeah. at the same time this this shows what i was saying earlier even in kerala which is a muslim stronghold this guy was attacked and then even though that there are secular laws and everything and criminal laws are very secular Mm. once again nobody is safe from because like once again this is one this goes back to the same point mm. a theology which teaches you how to die 101 ways how to die versus mm. <laughs> uh not even a single way how to live is a theology which is going to kill mm. because by definition they don't want to live they want to die because every single muslim whether he wants to go to jihad or not he will recite a dua after the namaz after the salah oh allah make me a martyr so that i could stand in front of you on the day of judgment as martyr so by default they want to die as a martyr i myself have been praying this for all my life as a muslim except for the last year but this is the reality of islam in essence mm -hmm. so why wouldn't it why wouldn't it be so you know that's why like tell me tell me one single reason why mm -hmm. a pure islamic believer would want to live this life as a prosperous person give me one reason in islam in quran in hadith in sharia mm -hmm. in fiqh one Mm. Mm. we won't see that an nisa wal banuna there's one ayah that it's a uh, bounties that is to make you bring into fitna exactly <laughs> yeah, the best so. you you are you are the best you are the best human being raised mm. up on this earth ever why because you put a chain around the necks or necks of the unbelievers and drag them to islam Mm. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, the uh, mm. the Kitab al-Tafsir of Sahih al-Bukhari. This this is the reality in essence of Islam. You are a best best human being. Why? Because you put chains around their necks and drag them to Islam. Mm. 
drag them like how, how would you uh, which which animal do you put chain around his neck and drag it's a dog mm. yeah not a cat not <laughs> a goat not a cow it's a this dog feel. yeah i can understand how how much feeling that with how much emotion that you are saying this because uh, uh one thing is sure that i'm i was not that much uh, a jihadi like you was but i was a partial jihadi i would say when it, when when i compare myself with you <laughs> but uh, but i'm so happy that i met someone who is more jihadi than me uh, <laughs> and at, at the same, and at the same time as you said islam is a, a an apocalyptic religion that's what we say it is always yeah. waiting for a, a, a doomsday it's not waiting for something good that to happen in this world so that is itself is the biggest problem because whenever you see uh, we are building something we are building a, a home or some other thing and if something goes wrong and if a part of that what we were building uh, comes down wh- what will be our feeling oh my god oh that that was so miserable that was a disaster it was it was a bad thing that's what the first feeling that would come to us right but for a muslim a real muslim a jihadi muslim if something goes wrong in this world where he is trying to build something even that will be uh, taken as a good thing and he will think that okay this was given by the god and it is uh, no, I, I, giving... i don't use the word god gods are good uh, sorry. as well gods are bad okay. as well. allah allah <laughs> allah <laughs> okay there are good gods and there are bad allah. gods and then there is an evil god which name is allah so use the word allah <laughs> because uh, sorry uh, for for me being an atheist every god is the same that's what i use that word but for that thing i would say that they always see that as a signal of something that is a good thing and that even that disaster they will uh, they will find it as something uh, that that is a good thing for them that's what we are seeing from palestine now they are not able to see the problem within within them what uh, that uh, jewophobia or the that hate towards the jews what is causing all these problems throughout all these years they are not able to see that even the arabs around the that country they have moved out of that but still even that country is not moving out or they are not realizing that so that itself is um, causing this problem to linger on and uh, it is not going to get over Uh, of all this uh, war and other situations what we are seeing in the middle east and other parts of the world always looking for the kafirs always looking for the infidels and trying to kill them this is there in their brain that that is the software that is operating and it's very difficult to get rid of that in in that way and uh, as you said it is the social pressure that we all create by doing all these kind of activities by uh, this youtube channels and other uh, I, all other kind of activism even a, a single tweet can bring about a lot of change by creating this positive transforming democratizing secularizing social pressure so that's the only thing what we are all working for and thank you for that thank you for inviting for that thank you so much arif bhai thank yeah. you so much aapne uh, ek मैसेज पे मेरे यू एक्सेप्टेड माय इनविटेशन और ये जो आज की जो एक पार्ट है स्ट्रीम का सेलिब्रेशन का नाइन्थ जनवरी एज एक्स मुस्लिम डे ये आपके बिना अधूरा रह जाता बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत अच्छा लगा आपसे बात करके और यस प्लीज गो एंड Six years, hmm. six years ago, Iranian female women who were apostatizing from Islam, they hmm. created a day on the twenty-first of August as an apostasy hmm. day. You can actually look at yeah. it on the internet yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, true. I think if if India is starting January ninth, we should actually celebrate ninth as an Indian apostasy day, and I, I love to celebrate it next year as well because now the day has yeah. passed. Rather, we'll celebrate it today. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, this we should year. celebrate August twenty-first because these are female. Yes. who were persecuted hmm. killed raped stabbed hunted That's down uh, and and this they started creating the apostasy day and it is august 21st so we should celebrate that as well so you as an organization uh, we are yeah. just two people here uh, you as an organization should push that day as well i would love yeah. to see that day revived for these women okay definitely we uh, we will take it in in that serious Now, manner uh, we will आइडन साहब एक जवाब देता हूं मैं जैसे कि दो ईद होती है ना बड़ी छोटी ईद दो ईद होती है 
uh, one, one thing I was about to add to Sahil was that um, we uh, we would like to bring Sahil. I don't know where uh, Adam is, but if possible, both of you to Kerala to attend an offline event here at a big gathering. If you would like to, or if you are yes, able yes, to yes. I am ready uh, for Adam. It's I not can possible. join I'm only not online. Oh, yeah, yeah. only online I can join, not physically. It's not possible. Okay, so you invite us to your place. I will come there. We will come there. No problem. <laughs> So I can only as go of now, as of now. The uh, Arif Bhai, uh, Adam can can join virtually, but yes, I, I, know, I, I know, can I know. I was just join you. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. I can I join you, kidding. and uh, you know, we'll have that program definitely. Sure. We'll, we'll. You know, let me give uh, let me give you why. Well, let me give you why. One of our another ex-Muslim from Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, his family was still in Pakistan. Uh, his father was beaten to a vegetable state. Uh, he can't recognize anybody now because they wanted his his location from his father. His mm -hmm. brother was shot three times. Two of the bullets has been removed. One is still is in body because it's in in such close proximity to his uh, backbone that if they will do a operation to remove it, he'll probably mm -hmm. never be able to walk again. His okay. sister was killed. So when you talk about the Pakistani ex-Muslims, especially who are creating a dent in Islam, uh their family their extended family nobody is secure and when you live in pakistan all of your extended family is obviously in pakistan so it is not possible for me to visit so far as mm. in a physical state at this moment so i'm a ghost just like allah i speak behind the curtain <laughs> <laughs> take beer ola uber take beer ola uber, <laughs> ola uber. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> thank so, you so uh, much. Thank you so much. Arif. Yeah, both of you. So happy More to talk to yeah. uh, Adam Seeker. I, I think we are talking for the first time. Uh, Sahil, I have yeah. met even before. Yes. Okay. That's so, correct. Sir. Can nice I leave now? You. And uh, I, I probably, if you have an email, send me an email. Sahil, please give him my email address. Sure. So yes, you can nice. join me in my English channel. Probably we'll, sure. we'll have some discussions in the English channel. I haven't revived my English channel for a long time. I need to revive it again. Uh, sure. And I'm going to start working on it. Okay. We'll work on that. No problem. Right. Okay. Thank you, Arif Bhai. Ek gulab so sabhi log jo hai, hamare Arif Bhai ke liye sare log bhez de. Arif Bhai, take a lot of gulabs now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Only gulabs, no stones in between. Okay. Roses are red, <laughs> violets are blue. You, I don't know what next is. <laughs> <I'm> okay. <forgot>. <laughs> so, uh, a very big was thanks to Muhammad yeah. Saab was 52. Was 52. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Muhammad Saab. <laughs> we call him. Yeah, Muhammad we here. have to say Muhammad, Muhammad Saab. Yeah, we we call him Muhammad here, and I, I I have a cat, and his name is Muhammad, a black cat. Oh, really, I, really, 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 really. Yeah, I wanted <laughs> to have that's, a. That's a, wrong, a dog. sir. It has to be a billa. It has to be yeah. a billa at least. It it is a billa. Yeah. Billa. Okay. In yes. in fact, I wanted to own uh, a dog. A dog. It's very difficult to manage here in this apartment, so I I, I just went with a black cat, a black billa. <laughs> Black billa is so better than outside. white billa. Yeah. yeah, he's outside the room, so I can't show you here. So anyway, thank you so much, and for thanks for all those roses, the red roses and the black hearts um, <laughs> coming in, and uh, thank you so much for all the love that you have shown here, and uh, both of you and all the viewers, uh, six thousand plus. I'm not seeing the number, but a big thanks to all of you. And uh, as said here, we will host a bigger event next year on this uh, January 9th as a in Indian ex-Muslim day. How about that? Yes. Awesome. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, so, Aripai. Thank you so okay. much. So we'll and one more it. thing, you got absolutely good setup, uh, you know, <laughs> the, uh, lighting okay. and background. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I need <laughs> some, you. yeah. I, I need some suggestions from you, which I'll take <laughs> offline. <laughs> offline yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all uh, through the support given to me from the viewers, the supporters, the memberships and all of the... It's huge here. And even from this uh, small part of the country. And even then, I was able to manage with that. And that's the kind of love we get showered with. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Aribai. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thanks. <clears throat>